Hi all, so we are on the last video of the UiPath browser automation activities and today we are going to see the use of inject JS script that is how you can execute a JavaScript code in your scope of the browser or while you are doing the browser automation. So if there is a situation where you cannot find the dynamic selector or the selector keeps on changing and you're not able to extract an attribute by which you can click on it or by which you can type into it then you can use this inject js script you can execute a javascript code or even if you're doing something very complex and you are aware of how to write the javascript code and you're aware of the syntax then you can use this so let's see how we can do it so we'll have a we'll have this site so it's a dummy site i think so we'll open this site and we'll try to type in the username and the password without the use of the type into without the use of the click activity so let's see how we're going to do so first we'll open the browser and we'll navigate to that url so for that we will be typing in the url so we have it here we mark it a new session so now once we are at the url we will drag in an inject js script and we will write the code so here you write in the code if there is any input parameter like when you call in a function or something then you can pass in the parameters to that function and then instead of writing the code you can even execute an external javascript file as well by mentioning the path of that file over here so we're going to write it over here so for that let's open the browser console on our web page that's by pressing f12 you can open the console and uh, then we will navigate to this particular text box and over here we can see that this particular text box is having an id which is unique to this particular text box by the name of text username so we'll just copy this and let's go into our uipath studio now so now what we're going to do we are going to write a function so we'll write function and we'll have to get that element by its id so we know the id what's the id name and we'll have to just get that element by mentioning its id so how we'll do this we'll do this by writing document dot get element by id we can get element by its id we can get elements by its class name so you can check all that the syntax and how you can get it by checking out what is there present on the javascript what syntax it uses and how you can get the element from the dom structure so we i've just pasted the id which i've copied from the browser so what we're going to do we will set the value of this id to what we want to so we will set the value to the value which we want it to be there so let's see it's the id written here so it's admin so we'll type in the username as admin so here we go so we've typed in the username as admin and that's it i think we're getting some error let's just check it let's over on to the error and we will get to know what error are we having So it's expression expected. So that means maybe we haven't closed the brackets and all. Okay. So it's because you have to pass all of this in string. So because you're passing it in string, it's better if you use single quotes over here. And now because it is demanding the script code to be passed in strings. So we will just add everything in double quotes. And now the error is gone and no spaces over here that's it so let's first check how does this thing work does it work or not and we can obviously increase the timeout and all okay so let's just click on run or debug and let's see if it enters or not and before that let's kill the browser 
and let's click on run. Okay, so it's opening the browser now. And uh, I just forgot to, you know, select on the drop down that it has to be Chrome. But that's okay. I got this pop up and it wasn't handled. Anyway, we'll run it again by selecting the browser Chrome. So now it's selected Chrome and I'll again run it. So even we can maximize it. So there is this activity maximize window present. We'll just have to pass in the window selector. So it typed in admin. So similarly, we'll type in the password also. So let's open the browser console and see the ID of the password field. Let's highlight this and see what's the ID of the password. So it's text password. This one, this is the ID. So let's just edit this and we'll pass in the password as well. So what we have to do is we have to write document dot get element by ID. And in the single quotes, we will paste what we've just copied from the browser dot value and let's see what's the value we have to pass in so we have to pass in admin one two three so let's pass the value in the single quotes and that's it so after typing in the id and the password we'll have to click on the login button so how do we do that so let's first take out the ID of this particular thing. So it's so it's button login, the ID. So let's copy this ID as well and go back to our studio. So now what we're going to write, we will write that first of all, get this element whose ID I'm mentioning. So it's get element by ID. And this is the ID. And once you get it, click on it. And that's it. Let's run it and see if it works or not. Let's close the browser and click on run. Okay, let's go back to the browser. Okay, and it has already clicked on run and we are now inside this side open source demo. Okay. So now uh, we can, so it's all depends on how you extract this thing. The DOM structure, from the DOM structure, you need to extract the IDs. So as we have seen for this orange site, We'll see it for Amazon. How do we do it? So let's click on the browser console and open it. Let's see the ID of it. So what's the ID over here? It's AP underscore email. So we'll just copy the ID. We'll go to our code where we have written it and we'll just edit in the ID. So over here we've edited the ID. Now, before entering the password, what you'll need to do is you'll need to click on the continue and then you'll get a screen wherein you'll type your password. So if I just look at this continue thing, what's the ID of it? There I go. Okay. And I see the ID is continue, but I think this ID would not work because this is not the unique ID from which we can differentiate this thing. So if I go back and hover over the this thing, so it's input time e email and ID is AP email. And if I do the same thing with continue, so this ID continue is getting repeated. The span is also having ID continue. This is also having continue. This is also having ID continue. So we need to identify that where in, in which particular element does this ID lie. So uh, let's check it. If we copy just this ID, 
it would not work so we'll replace this that we have to click on continue we'll remove the password thing and we'll now be changing the url so our url would now be of amazon.com and let's close the chrome and let's click on run so it has typed admin so that's what we typed but it, it did not click on continue so for that what you can do if you just open your browser and in the console you type in document dot get element by id and you give this continue let's see what do we get so we get this whole spam thing and when we open it so this is how you have to find the ids of your particular element on which you have to click so if you open it so then you see there is this button inside this particular span so now if you do document dot get element by id dot child notes or so you get this node list and from here you can take out that you have this button over here so now if you do like from zero you you have to again get the child notes so now you can see that on the on this node of the zero index you get this input continue button so on this you have to click so you have to get this by understanding the dom structure of the site so now if you have to click on this particular thing what you have to do you don't have to directly click on continue because that's not exactly the button is so you'll have to go to the child notes then again to the child notes and then you'll have to click on and let's click on ok and execute it let's click on run and this execution has started let's wait and now see okay so it clicked on continue and then we got this error that there was a problem you cannot find an account so that means it has clicked on so this way you can without clicking or without any use of selector you can type in and you can click on the web thing also if you do not want to type in the code and instead want to import an external javascript file you can do that by this way that suppose you have an external js file wherein your code is placed you will just have to type in the path like this suppose it's test.js and from back of the process if two three workflows have already worked previously and they are returning some output which, which you have to pass it to this particular file then in input parameter you can pass in those values so suppose if i have this name which is coming from some other workflow and i have to pass it to this name test.js then i'll have to simply type in name here and that name would act as an input parameter to this javascript file and then uh, the result the output of that program i can have in here in some other variable which i can use in another workflow so that's how you use inject js script and uh, that's a wrap of the ui automation or browser or activities so I've, so I've covered all the activities under ui automation or browser or activities i hope now you're concept is clear and you're aware of all the properties associated with the activities and how to use them so thanks for watching the video and stay tuned for more updates and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for further updates happy automation